Thank you. That was so beautiful. I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> but I just, the energy in the room was just beautiful. I don't know if you felt that. I did. It was really nice. I hated interrupting you, but I thought, well, we could meditate the whole class. <laughs> I don't know if they'd appreciate that. <laughs> so, checking in, how is the practice going? Any questions, concerns? put on my glasses so I can see your facial expressions. <laughs> I can, thank you, Gigi. I can tell that you're smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot, however, read your eyes. <laughs> um, any questions or thoughts or anything that you want to share since two weeks ago, since we were together, about how you practice is going, challenges? Yes. I'll start. I think I'm, I'm, I'm having um, a tough time making time for the practice that because yes. I have so much going on in my personal life right now yes. that I'm just so stressed mm -hmm. and um, I want to but but I find it hard and then I get angry. So I'm a little angry right now. You're <laughs> angry at? I'm angry at um, we're having construction of the house, and the house is really, you know, it's mm -hmm. so chaotic. Okay. And there's just not enough time in the day to get things done, mm -hmm. to, to bring order in my life. Mm -hmm. And so, and then not having the time to be able to do this, this is really, it's upsetting, okay. actually. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else uh, feel that way, not having enough time, getting upset with yourself? I, yeah. Me too. All right, so there, you're not alone. <laughs> yeah, doesn't that feel better? Yeah, know that yeah you're not it feels better that I'm not alone. Yeah. Yes, and I, I was just actually thinking about that last night. Wow, I'm not practicing in the way that I would like to, and I was getting on myself, and I was getting upset with myself, and then I realized, wait a minute, that's not the point. This is not a doing, it's not a doing thing, it's a being, and wherever you can fit, just practicing being in the moment. So maybe if there's a lot of construction going on at your house, maybe one thing you do is to check, you maybe want to watch the construction. Make that a mindfulness activity. Isn't that fun? And then breathe. And just notice your breathing as you're watching the move back and forth or up and down or pounding, just breathing and whatever that might be, that can become a practice. Does that sound good? Yeah, thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah. Good. So I'll try to appreciate what's going on other than fighting it maybe. Yeah, well well, you know, there's a that's what's that getting you? More anger, right? That's not working. So let that go. <laughs> so yeah, so it's whatever is presented. You know, this is life. This is life. It doesn't go as we plan. Right? So, so where's my opportunity to practice in this moment? Chaotic construction. I'll just practice watching, being and watching. And then we're going to practice uh, what's called loving kindness meditation practice. And that's, ooh, I use that one on the plane today a lot. <laughs> Share that one with you. It's really handy. Yeah. Yeah. You can use that one in meetings, loving kindness. So it's just again, it's a practice. Again, what we're doing is we are uh, literally changing the structure and function of the brain. And I learned so much more about this from this, this conference. It was so fun, so fascinating. So what they have determined from the research is there is no significant difference in what kind of focused exercise, they don't have a study right now that compares this focused exercise is better than this one. So isn't that interesting? So just practice with whatever you have. Okay. For, for novice practitioners. Good, what else came up for anybody? Any other questions or thoughts? Ideas? Yeah. 
I'm pendulating a little bit between feeling how you're feeling and then feeling very overcommitted. So forgiving myself for letting some things slip. Good. So I, I go and I say, okay, I would like to be exercising more. I would like to have my house cleaner. I would like to be more relaxed. I would and, uh -huh. and, and oscillating between that and then saying, okay, I have these few things that I need to continue to get through and I can pick up and be more regularly doing the things that I would like to be doing once I get through this period of overcommitted and I've I see the light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. it so to speak so I'm oscillating between feeling exactly that frustration that I can't do as much as I would like to and just letting it go good good and that's a practice too just start even observing this was a choice I didn't want to make and I made it or this is a choice I made and it doesn't feel good mm -hmm. like that's the practice right moving from the the what is it, what does mean call that the meta awareness to the what is it called what, I can't think of the name meta attention thank you what was it meta, meta attention. attention yes meta attention good so and again house cleaning can be a very meditative practice right I'm dusting I'm dusting I'm dusting or I'm dusting I'm dusting <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but the, I learned that from Thich Nhat Hanh. I used to have these cards all over my house that said, okay, I'm washing dishes, now wash dishes. Washing dishes, washing dishes. And, and boiling water, boiling water. Making a cup of tea, cup of tea. It can all be an opportunity to practice. Uh, yes? I guess my question is, how can I be aware with my own feelings and, and needs that I need to do that versus just because I you know my husband's on one side, construction people on the other side. I mean it's just like I'm getting bombarded and, yeah. and then I lose myself rather yes. than maybe focusing on enjoying yeah. you know certain things. It's just not there and I get frustrated. Yeah, and a lot of stress. Well let me go back for just a moment. Um, I had the great privilege did did you did anybody see the Dalai Lama when he was here visiting? Okay, or a picture of the Dalai Lama? Okay, and did you in in that picture there might have been a picture of his interpreter? Um, and and so well his interpreter was at this conference. He's uh, in, involved in, in creating this organization called Seacare at Stanford University, and I. And his presence there, rep representing the Buddhist perspective, is that the challenge about teaching Westerners, or those of us who are in, uh, inculturated in the Western society, which that's me, about mindfulness practices, we, we focus on the doing so much. We focus on the expression of it, rather than just allowing where we are and what's going to, you know, what it is, what it is, whatever it is, whatever it is, it is. Because we're so focused on trying to manage and manipulate and I gotta take care of this and everything's action oriented. Now I'm not saying that that's wrong or right. I'm not saying any, making any judgment about that. What I wanna bring it back to is, you know, our, re our reflection questions around what do I think about it? How do I feel about it? What do, what do I want to do about it? Or, or what can I, the other question I'll add next week is, what can I just simply let go? So when I'm ever in a situation that I don't want to be in, and all of a sudden I feel this anxiety welling up, this stress welling up, I'm here, I don't want to be here, I need to be over here. No worries, I was in this moment today, you know, the, the blessings, to the folks in Aurora, and I'm, I'm gonna try to do this without crying, but I turned in my rental car and I'm behind because I was taking care of some someone else who was mourning that morning, and so I got half an hour delay getting to the rental car. I get to the rental car and the gentleman who's, who's checking in my car can barely function. 
because his wife's, one of his wife's best friend was killed and he's just not functioning well. And, and I'm thinking, I'm gonna miss my flight, right? And I'm thinking, this is so stupid. So you miss flight, so you miss class, so you, you know, this man is in pain, right? I am where I am right now for a reason. And I just tell myself, even when I don't believe it, right? And I gave him a hug, and we chatted a little bit, and you know what? And that kept happening, like every place that kept happening, and I made my flight just fine. And so it was one of those things, like, and even if I didn't make my flight, I was, I was going to be in a place where that, that, there are no mistakes, no coincidences. I, I am where I'm at and where I need to be. And that's a huge change in frame, framing for me because I'm like, well, this was, isn't what I had planned at this moment. This isn't going the way I want it to go in this moment. People aren't responding in the way I want them to respond or whatever in this moment. But what he was saying is this is, this is the practice. To be in the moment is the practice. And we, we have a Western spin on it where we focus on, and what do you want to do about it? But our practice really is getting into this place of reflecting on, because we're, uh, brought, you know, we're academics, and so we've been uh, prone to first, we always get, what do you think about it? We very rarely go into how we feel about it what we sense about it. And then you could replace this as, how do I want to be? How do I want to be about this? As opposed to even do. An interesting study, I, I don't have these citations down, but um, from this conference was, oh, I just lost it. Dang. Oh, well, they were doing some, uh, because one of the challenges about the research that, that he was cautioning is, well, we're still focused in what, what behavior comes out of a mindful practice. And he said, that's really not what it's about. It's around your state of being in a mindful practice. And going back to our conversation about quantum physics, that energy radiates out. And then there are some biological markers, even, of that energy radiating out. I learned that all of these wrinkles apparently make me appear approachable to people. I love that. I'm like, oh, I love that. I have all these crow's feet. And apparently it's a, it's a biological marker that you can approach me. Cool. Somebody said that. I don't know. I forget that citation. But it was a woman, so I believed her. <laughs> a woman researcher. <laughs> okay. Is that helpful? So, where, so one of the things that's lowered my anxiety is when I'm like, I don't want to be here, I'm not fighting. And sometimes, you know, I can't let it go, right? Sometimes it's just not working. And I'll, I'll stress my anger and then be with my anger. Okay, I'm just going to be with my anger now. I'm angry, I'll be with it. Anger, anger, anger. But again, think about what do I think about it? How do I feel it? What do I want to do about it? Well, I certainly don't want to take out my anger on anyone. Sometimes I don't go through this process and, whew, <laughs> Somebody gets it. <laughs> I'm sure you haven't witnessed, none of you have witnessed me do that, right? <laughs> Thanks for the nervous laugh. Okay. <laughs> Is that helpful? Good. Questions or thoughts around that or other suggestions that you all are experiencing and want to share? I think it's really good that we, we talked about this because Sometimes in life we are in this ambiguous kind of a space, like like you don't know why this is happening. Mm -hmm. It's not good or bad, but you feel like I'm wasting my time. That, that's the yeah. that's the Western perspective. Like you have to account for everything. It has to be meaningful and productive. Or and sometimes like it's all gone, and then you think like I did nothing, and then you get angry with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, and that happens to me a lot, like I feel I haven't accomplished uh, what I set out to do. And, mm -hmm. But then maybe that's what was necessary for that moment, to, to realize that. Yeah. 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 It's a celebration. Remember, it's a celebration when all of a sudden you have your, whenever you have your aha. Even if it is 30 minutes later, two weeks later, or in my case, you know, 47 years later, <laughs> or whatever, right? It's like, oh, hmm, now, now, 
now I'm mindful of that moment. Now I'm aware of that moment and what I was feeling and what I was doing. That's right. What we don't want to get back into, though, is uh, darn me, darn me. So we're going to practice a, a self-compassion mindfulness exercise and something that we can use on, also utilize this practice on a loved one in our life, a stranger. You can practice this on a stranger, or you can practice this on someone who might be an adversarial in your life. Or bring up adversity or a challenge. Does that sound good? We'll do that in a moment. Is that helpful? So, we're, so just kind of in summary, we don't have research around what's neurologically happening when we're in a state of being. Um, however, with the research that's coming, is there actually are some particular areas in the brain where the neuroscientists have narrowed down when we are focused on ourselves and when we are focused on others. But what's key about this is, what they've discovered is unless you are engaged in an understanding, a conceptualization of who you are, and that's why we keep focusing on these three questions, there aren't authentic markers that get triggered. And therefore, if I want you to be of service, and I want you to be of service, yet you don't see any energetic or biological markers in me that I am of service, then you'll be less likely to be of service. If I appear to be all about me, you will respond all about you. Does that make sense? So that's why we're going to focus a little bit, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's why we'll focus a little bit more on uh, authenticity. These are reminders. Please avoid judging yourself. This is it's a practice. Practice. Just one mindful breath a day, one mindful step a day, whatever the case might be. But basically what we're going to do here is um, we're going to build on those three questions that we ask. Who am I? What do I want? What's my life's purpose? The values exercise that we did earlier, and if you weren't here, hopefully you were able to get on the website and get those materials. The Byron Katie inquiry process, is this true? How do I know it's true? How do I feel when I don't, when I believe this is true? How do I feel when I believe this is not true? And the conscious choice making process. Talk a little bit more about that. And differentiating fact from interpretation. Okay. There are con uh, construction workers in your home. Uh, it, they may be behind schedule. They may have done something wrong. Those might all be facts. But what's your interpretation of that? And that may be what's causing you uh, suffering. <laughs> right, so authenticity. Basically what we're talking here is the, the notion of it being true to one's own self. And uh, earlier in the course we had the quote from the, the famous quantum physicist who said basically um, uh, the point of inquiry is not to fool yourself, and yourself is easy to fool because you t you fool yourself. So I have a lot of conversations with my friends. I put up a dog here because if I think if anything is authentic, it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> they're just ah, they're so authentic. Um, so I keep thinking that any time that I'm not being honest with another, I'm not being honest with myself. And so this whole notion of journeying through authenticity, and this was a, I updated this slide yesterday because this was a, one of the researchers there, and this was her whole point, is the, the theory around selective investment theory is, it's when you want somebody else to engage in behavior that says, what, what is in this for someone other, other than me? And that's again this, I need to be compassionate to myself so that I can be compassionate to others, and our course is about learning how to be compassionate to, to ourselves. But if you're thinking about collaboration and, and working around, uh, particularly in an environment where you're trying to depoliticize decision-making, if I 
am appearing that it's all about me and I'm showing up that it's all about me, it's going to be very difficult, right, for you to engage in a collaborative conversation and for us to really get on the agenda on the table. So that's why our journey in, in authenticity, our expectations for others to be authentic begins with ourselves in our own practice. And I can be authentic and still engage with someone who I may sense is not, and vice versa. You could be authentic and still engage with me when you feel like you're not. But, it, but, but if I see that you're being authentic, I'll more than likely become authentic. And there's some cool research on, on that now about showing up. Questions on that? So what we're talking about here, what do we mean by this? Well, uh, we really mean that this first starts with self-acceptance. I love, you know, accept yourself when you're angry, accept yourself when you're loving, accept yourself when you're patient, accept yourself when you're not. That is all of who you are. I mentioned earlier like the, the all of who I am, I don't love all of who I am. And I practice accepting all of who I am. Because not doing that moves me right into judgment. If I accept, pardon the expression, that I can be a bitch <laughs> without judgment, then, then I can work in that space. If I'm pretending that I'm never that whatever, right, or that's bad, then that person emerges unexpectedly and without consciousness, and, and then I can't work with that part of myself. I can't uh, be aware, be mindful. Do the Byron and Katie, Byron and Katie in the brain process with that person. Does that make sense? That part of myself. Okay. So, and, and rationalization also is key. I just recently mentioned to my friends, if I am rationalizing a decision, that probably means I'm not being honest with myself. I'm explaining to you and I'm getting into this rationalization of why I'm doing this, making this decision, or why I'm saying this, or why I'm whatever, that's a trigger to me now that there's something that I'm not being authentic with myself because when I'm being authentic, I'm going to own my own choice, own my own decision making, own my own choice, and I'll take full responsibility that I don't need to explain that to you. Does that make sense? Unless you ask me questions and then I can explain. Does that make sense? Wouldn't you rationalize if you think the other person is going to judge you, even if you are accepting of that decision or behavior? Good. So this is what brings in this. Well, being aware of, but not of concern of what others think of you. Yes. I, I did this while I was at the conference. I, I was in this room, in a small group out section, and all of a sudden I felt really backed into a corner. And I started rationalizing why I didn't want to do something. And then I realized it was all about that. I was all concerned about what they would think of me. Because when I did the pick, I'm like, yeah, no, no, I don't want to do this. But when I was rationalizing, you know, and it was this blah, 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 right? mm -hmm. I realized, oh, I'm worried about what they're going to think of me for not wanting to do this. Let it go. They're going to think whatever, I mean, people, you know, people are going to think about what, whatever they're going to think about you regardless. So why try to manage that? Is that helpful? Mm. Good. Okay. So take a moment, if you would, and pull out your journals again, and ask yourself, just in a few minutes, how would you describe your authentic self? And how well does your authentic self align with what you understand to be your professional self? Or any role that you are functioning in, whether it's partner, mother, daughter, son, whatever it might be. Sorry, we do have a male in the room. <laughs> um, and then how well do you feel that your authentic self resonates or fits in with the perception of your work self or your work culture? Or your home, you know, again, community service, use whatever you'd like to. And what, again, what do you think about that? How do you feel about that? So go ahead and take a few minutes and do that. Are you guys cold? Yes. Yeah.